I love Islam. 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 Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen Amma ba'd fa'a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habiballah As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabiyallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurallah Welcome back to I Love Islam. Today, we have something very important to, to talk about. And I, w I don't want to delay anything. We need to get straight on to our topic. The first segment that we're going to have is the quiz of the day. I love Islam. I love Islam. I love Islam. Quiz of the day. Well, what's our question today? What is Imam Hussein's sister's name? Let's move on to our next segment, which is story time. I love Islam. I love Islam. I love Islam. 14. Subhanallah. Today, we're going to talk about something very important. We are going to talk about the princes of Jannah, the princes of paradise. Subhanallah, who are these individuals? Which personalities are known as the princes of Jannah? Subhanallah, these are the honorable and beloved and sacred grandsons of the last and final messenger of Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the, the two grandsons are called Sayyiduna Imam Hassan and Sayyiduna Imam Hussein radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. Subhanallah, our beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa is reported to have said that Hassan and Hussein are the leaders of the youth of Jannah. Subhanallah, these are the beautiful princes of paradise. Our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam loves Imam Hussein and Imam Hassan so much that when we read in the books, when we study from the ahadith, from the prophetic narrations, we hear from the scholars and we learn that our Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam used to love Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein so much that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to hug them, cuddle them, and then smell them, just like we smell flowers. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say that these are my two flowers. Subhanallah, just imagine how much love Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein used to get at their young age, in their childhood. From the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Subhanallah, look at their youth, look at their childhood, how blessed, how great it is. Subhanallah. Sayyiduna Imam Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu is the elderly son. And Imam Hussein, obviously, from that point of view, is they're the, they're the youngest. So Imam Hassan is big, Imam Hussein is the youngest one. So Imam Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu has many titles. He's got a title called Taqi and Sayyid. Taqi means a pious person. Sayyid means the leader. And he's also known as the grandson of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In Arabic we say Sibatu Rasulillah. 
He is the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he has been given this great title by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he is the leader of the youth of Jannah. Subhanallah. Look at the high status and the greatness of Sayyiduna Imam Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. When was Sayyiduna Imam Hassan born? Hmm. Have you ever thought? Do you know the answer? Well, come on then, shall I tell you? Okay, Sayyidina Imam Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu was born on the night of 15 Ramadan, third Hijri in the beautiful city of Madinatul Munawwara. Subhanallah. And our beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam performed his aqiqah on the seventh day and trimmed his hair and gave the command to give the silver in charity equal to the weight of the hair. Subhanallah. Just imagine how lucky Sayyidina Imam Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu is that he is being brought up with so much love and affection by directly from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is Sayyidina Imam Hassan. What about Imam Hussein? The younger brother, Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he is also known as the leader of the martyrs. He had a very great title. He, Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, you know when he was born? So Imam Hassan was born in the month of Ramadan. And then, when was Imam Hussein born? Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu was born on 5th of Sha'ban al muazzam in the 4th Hijri, again in the beautiful city of Madinatul Munawwara. Subhanallah, these both princes of Jannah, they were born in the beautiful city of Madinatul Munawwara, directly in the upbringing and nurturing from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what are the titles and how is Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu known for? Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu has been given the names Hussein and Shabir from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his title is Sibtu Rasul and he is also known as Raihanatul Rasul, the flower of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And just like his elder brother, Sayyiduna Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu is also known as the leader of the youth of Jannah. Subhanallah, subhanallah. My dear brothers, we talk about some very important personalities of Islam. We learn about the blessed household of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We talk about the companions, the Sahaba alayhim ridwan. And today we are talking about the honorable and the mighty Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhumah. And subhanallah, who gave these names to them? Who named Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein? You want to know? Our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave these beautiful names to both of them. Subhanallah. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reported to have said, on the day of judgment, you will be called by your names and the names of your forefather. Therefore, keep good names. Subhanallah, if there's any child born in your family, in your neighborhood, make sure you give them a beautiful name. Don't just choose a name, you know, like they say from the factory or from the internet, but make sure you select a beautiful, a really nice name, which has a beautiful meaning as well, which has some connection with our Islamic history. Maybe you can name your own child with the beautiful name of Hussein. If you want, you can give your child the name Hassan. You can give them the beautiful name, the best of names, Muhammad. You can give them beautiful names. Remember, name is a very important aspect of our life. You know, when you grow up, you will always remember that my father 
gave me this name. My parents, my family members gave this name to me. And then you will ponder upon this meaning. What is this name? Why did they, you know, for example, if you're called Omar, then you'll be thinking, why did my father name me Omar? Who is Omar? And when you find out that Omar is the second caliph of Islam, the leader of the believers, Amir al muminin Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and you have the blessed name Umar, you'll be amazed and you will have special connection and you will want to learn more about Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Likewise, if you are called Hussein, if you are called Hassan, then that's what you would like to do as well. You want to, you want to find out how was the life of Sayyidina Imam Hassan and Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, and how did they look like? What was their beautiful appearance like? How did they used to speak? What did they used to do? What was their love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam? How much did they love worshipping Allah? How much did they love and how much connection did they have with the Quran? All these things you will want to learn about them. And you know why? Because you are named Hussein, you are named Hassan, you have a beautiful name. So therefore, all the parents who are watching this program, make sure you give your kiddies beautiful names. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And it was the 10th of Muharram when the great Imam, the leader of the youth of paradise, Sayyiduna Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu, also was martyred. And it was not easy, it was so much difficult. Today, I want to share with you some of the key lessons that we learn from Karbala. One of the most important lessons that we learn, and this is for all of us, it's for me, it's for you, it's for the mummy, daddy, all of you are watching, it's for all of us. That is, we learn the important lesson of being patient being strong and always have trust in Allah. Don't complain, stay strong and have faith in Allah. If you look at the childhood of Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, right in his infancy when he was a child, his family members, which includes his honorable mother, which is the lady of the universe, the great honorable lady, the leader of the woman. She is Sayyida Fatima to Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha. She knew that my son is going to get martyred. Uh, you know, when he grows big, he will get martyred. He will pass away. There are, there are evil people. They will hurt him. And he will become, he will pass away in the path of Allah. In young age, she was aware. And the honorable father, the mighty father, Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was also aware that this son of ours, Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he grows big, he is going to pass away in the path of Allah. He will be martyred. And then the, the best of the creation, our beloved master, the Sultan of Makkah and Medina, our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam was also aware that this grandson of ours is going to be martyred. And these are the great personalities. They knew that our grandson will, be, will, be, will get martyred one day. But these people, they could have made dua in the court of Allah. Ya Allah, protect him so that he doesn't get martyred. So people don't do injustice with him. But these people who are so accepted in the court of Allah, Sayyida Fatima to Zahra, the Honorable Mother radiallahu ta'ala anha, even the Honorable Father Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and the blessed household of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa they all knew it was mashhoor, it was known in the family that this son of ours, he is going to be martyred one day. In fact, even Sayyiduna Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu knew that one day I am going to be shaheed. Even then, he did not complain. He did not complain in the court of Allah. Ya Allah, why this? Why is it happening to me? Why not someone else? No. Sayyiduna Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the whole family from the childhood, 
they remained patient they remained strong and they had trust in allah but look at us we claim to be the lovers of sayyidina imam hussein radiyallahu ta'ala anhu but and something even smallest the tiniest thing afflicts us we start complaining you know if it's too warm we say oh no it's too hot today and if the weather changes slightly oh no it's cold oh no it's freezing we start complaining if the food is not according to our taste then you know some naughty children out there what do they do they throw the plates away they they start shouting at their mummy and daddy why did you make this oh i don't like this why 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 do we complain yeah sometimes if someone says said something to you and that's not according to your mood what do we do we start complaining or oh, he's he's done this and he's done that you know we've got like a big list of complaints we claim to love sayyidina imam hussein radiyallahu ta'ala anhu then we need to act upon his lifestyle as well we need to act upon his teachings he practically showed us not just during the scene of karbala where everything went the other way and it was so difficult so hard and challenging and one by one the team members were martyred there's bloodshed everywhere he remained so strong he was patient throughout his life and yet we we claim to love imam hussein and we're not ready to be patient come on what's that's not right so that's a very important lesson that we need to learn now we claim to love sayyidina imam hussein and the family of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam however when it comes to give time for islam we struggle we find excuses oh i've got this i've got that or oh, i need to play games i need to go out with my friends i need to go swimming i need to play football i've got this going on or oh, i've got very a very important appointment or oh, i don't have time to go to weekly ijtema of dawat islami we we make excuses come on what's going on we need to learn this lesson for islam we need to make time as well we need to travel very important lesson that we learn from the from karbala is we need to travel for islam as well we should travel to learn knowledge we should travel to the masjid to read our salah we should travel to spread the beautiful teachings of islam those people those youngsters who are watching this program if you are interested in studying why don't you become the alim why don't you become a islamic scholar dawud islami gives you this opportunity you can make this intention that in the love of sayyiduna imam hassan imam hussein and the family of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i will do the alim program i will learn about islamic history about the islamic principles and i will spread islam be strong have faith in allah trust allah taala inshallah you will have blessings in both worlds finally i want to mention two important lessons we learned that sayyiduna imam hussein radiyallahu ta'ala anhu used to love so much worshiping allah they did not miss their salah and we claim to love imam hussein radiyallahu ta'ala anhu but we don't have time for salah come on that's not right if you're lazy in salah if you don't pray namaz today is the day make the intention first make toba ask allah for forgiveness for all the prayers that you have missed and make a firm promise ya allah from now on i will never miss my salah again i love imam hussein i love imam hassan i love the family of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and in their love i will act upon islam and i will never miss my salah sayyidina imam hussein radiyallahu ta'ala anhu used to love reciting the quran he had such great connection with the quran i'm just going to give you a glimpse of his love for the quran when sayyidina imam hussein radiyallahu ta'ala anhu was martyred these evil people they were you could say their hearts were dead they were so evil they didn't know what they were doing like they say brain freeze they were so much indulged in sins they were make they, they knew what, what what they were doing but they were make they thought it was good and astaghfirullah you know it's very hard for me to say but these people they removed the neck of imam hussein from the body 
Astaghfirullah al-Azim. And you know what they did after that? They put this blessed and honorable sacred neck, the head Mubarak of Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu on top of a spear. And they put it up high as if they've done something big. They've got the victory and they've done something great. Yeah, they were, they were parading and showing off. Astaghfirullah. And you know what they, was, they thought? They've, they've achieved something huge. But even then, when the head, blessed head of Imam Hussein was away from the body, it was on top of a spear. Those people who observed and watched, they noticed the lips of Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu were moving. Subhanallah. Even after passing away, the lips were moving and words could be heard. And when they noticed, Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu was reciting the verses of the glorious Quran. Subhanallah. This is the love and the connection with the Quran. My dear brothers and the viewers of Madri channel, the viewers of I Love Islam program, as Muslims, we need to connect with the Quran as well. Ask yourself, when was last time you opened the Quran and you looked at the Quran, you said, this is the kalam of my Rabb. This is the message from my Allah. And you kissed it with love. When was it? When was last time you recited? Come on, this is not fair. It's not right. We claim to love Sayyidina Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhumah. But yet we don't have time for the Quran. Now this is not justice. Please everyone, make this intention that we are going to reflect upon these important messages that we learn. Now we need to move on to our next segment. Now can we see on the screen what is our next segment please? I love Islam. I love Islam. I love Islam. Subhanallah. Our next segment is Islamic manners. In this segment, we normally learn about the beautiful teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. Our Islam is a beautiful way of life. Islam is a whole code of life. Islam teaches us how to be a good human. Only a good Muslim can be a good human. So we need to live our life according to the teachings of Islam. And today, our topic is, we need to be kind to our neighbors. Subhanallah. Islam teaches us to be kind to our neighbors. Be honest with yourself. Are you kind to your neighbors? Or is it the neighbors are fed up with you? Come on, that's not fair. That's not right, is it? If you've been naughty to your neighbors, you know what to do, don't you? You need to go next door and say, sorry. Oh, please forgive me. I won't do naughty things again. I'm going to be a good neighbor from now on. Remember, Islam teaches us the rights of other people. How to look after our parents, how to care about other people, and in particular, our neighbors. Although we live in our own house, we've got our mom and dad with us, we've got our family with us, and we have our own activities going on. But these people who live around us, they are our neighbors, and they have rights. We must look after those rights. We can't, Muslim doesn't give trouble to the neighbors. Muslim is a person who the neighbors are happy with. You need to live your life in such a way that even when you grow up, the neighbors can say, yes, this person has been my neighbor for the last 20 years and I've never had a complaint. That's how you need to live your life. This is what Islam is all about. So be nice and kind to your neighbors. If you have Muslim neighbors around you, then give them. Why don't you give some food with the intention to give thawab and reward to the martyrs of Karbala? That's a beautiful thing people do. Why don't you do it as well? Tell your family, tell your mommy and daddy or auntie to cook some beautiful food and pack it up, make some containers and give to your neighbors. Subhanallah, Islam tells us to be nice and kind with neighbors and Islamic History is full of examples how our great Muslims, great Imams, they used to be so nice and kind to their neighbors 
to the extent that the naughty neighbors who were really bad and away from faith, they became Muslims just by looking at their beautiful character. So make this intention today that we are going to be kind and generous to our neighbors. Right, time's not giving my side today. Let's quickly move on to our next segment. What is our next segment? Let's see on the screen. I love Islam. I love Islam. I love Islam. 14. Our next segment is Islamic ruling. But well, hold on a minute. I've not read the messages today. So before I get into it, let me go through some of the messages. SubhanAllah, a lot of messages are popping up now. And, and I better start reading them. Oh, what's the first message then? Okay, the, okay Mu'iz from Glasgow has sent a message. Oh, they gave the answer. Mm. Your answer looks correct. I won't say it yet. Okay, who's next then? Um, Muhammad Zaim. He's not told us where is he from. But he's got the correct answer as well. And the next message is, my name is Muhammad Hassan. I really like your program. The answer is, yeah, your answer is correct. I will announce the answer, inshallah, later on. But let's move on to our next segment, which, is, which we are in. It's called Islamic ruling. Okay, what are we going to learn today? Today, very briefly, we, gonna, we are going to talk about method of traveling salah. What? Traveling salah? Salah which travels around? No, no, no. Tr salah doesn't travel. It's the person who travels and he becomes a traveler, then he is praying salah. That's what we're going to be learning. Have I confused you? I was, I was, I was, that's what I'm trying to do. Anyway, method of traveling salah. What we need to re understand that we have five prayers in one day. Which is, and there's a, there's a full method how we pray them. And then when someone is traveling and he's traveling, for example, he's traveling around 92 kilometers in distance and he's planning to stay there less than 15 days. So he's going, he's going to a destination which is around 92 kilometers or more and he's going to stay there less than 15 days, then Islamically, when he leaves his town or his city, from that moment, he's a traveler. So he's called, you could say, Islamic traveler, if you want to call it. So technically, he's known as Islamic traveler. And what happens when you're traveling, during your travel period, when you pray the Farz of Zuhr, Asr, and Isha Salah, so not Fajr, not Maghrib, but Zuhr, Asr, and Isha prayer. When you need the Fard, the Farz Rakat, then you need to half them. So instead of reading four Rakat of Zuhr, you pray two Rakat of Zuhr. Is that clear? Like similarly, if you're praying Asr Salah, instead of four Rakat of Farz of Asr, you will pray two Rakat of Asr. Similarly, if you're praying your Isha Namaz, you will pray, instead of four rakat of Farz, you will pray two rakat of Farz of Isha prayer. And the rest of things like Sunnah and Witr, you will continue. As if you have time, you will continue, you will read. But if you're reading Isha prayer, then you will need to read your Witr as normal as well. Let's move on to the next segment now. What is our next segment, please? I love Islam. I love Islam, I love Islam. 14. Subhanallah, what's our next segment? Sunnah lifestyle. Wow, Subhanallah, today we're going to be learning about the Sunnah lifestyle. What do we do in this segment? We learn different Sunnah different traditions of the Prophet ﷺ. Today's topic is the method of drinking. Yes, we're going to be learning how to drink water. What's the correct way to drink water? Now quickly, I'm going to tell you how to drink water. The next time you're about to drink water or anything, make sure you drink, you say Bismillah first, 
you hold it with your right hand and make sure you look at the drink that's front of you so you don't close your eyes or don't drink it in the dark make sure you got light there drink it whilst you are watching and then make sure you're sitting down you're not standing up and don't spill the water remember drink and water is very special it's precious we need to respect water do you know karbala and one lesson we learn from there is value water value water because then people who were the evil people out there they may they stopped water from reaching uh, to the family of imam hussein radiyallahu ta'ala anhu even a, a six month old child sayyidna ali asghar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he was thirsty as well for three days our islam teaches us to give water to other people so if you want to be nice and kind why don't you give water to other people be you know, be one of those generous people in the love of imam hussein and the family of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam why don't you give water as isa al thawab to your neighbors and your relatives uh, what was the question of the day hmm. the question of the day was can you name the sister of sayyiduna imam hussein radiyallahu ta'ala anhu who's the who's the sister what's her name well let's go find out then come on then can our technical team tell us what is the answer to our quiz of the day subhanallah the answer to our question is sayyidatuna zainab radiyallahu ta'ala anha subhanallah congratulations to all of those who got it correct well done and one of the reason why we had this question is that so you need to know the names if we say we love imam hussein we say we love imam hassan radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma but then do we know their family members we love them but we don't know the names of their family members we don't know their children's names we don't know who are their parents and what are their status how what did what are their teachings if we don't know about them then this is not real love so we need to show the real love and the real love is we need to learn about the blessed family of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the ahlul bayt and also the sahaba ikram alayhim ridwan may allah ta'ala allow us to be from from amongst those who have deep love for the ahlul bayt and the sahaba ikram alayhim ridwan and may we remain from those who pass away with this iman and also on the day of judgment may we rise with those people who love the ahlul bayt who love sahaba ikram and may allah ta'ala bless us peace and happiness in both worlds inshallah i'm looking at the time it's, it's going now that's it it's bye we're going to see you next week look after yourself until next week i do the wada may allah ta'ala keep you safe and protected keep watching madni channel i love islam 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 I love Islam